Hey, Dirt Road Believers, I'm so happy that you're here with me today for this final devotion in January. Um, my name is Tina. If you're just now joining us, we get together every Tuesday on YouTube, or you can find this video on my Dirt Road Believer Facebook group, and we get into the Word. Today is going to be um, sort of an interesting topic. We're talking about lying, and it's something that, uh, you know, they say if you have a teenager, if your teenager's breathing, they're lying. Well, that's really true of all of us. If we're breathing, we're lying. I mean, really, when we were ousted from the garden, we've been liars ever since. So today I wanna get some perspective on lying, maybe the truth about lying, if you will. So it's gonna be an interesting devotion and my, my objective is to really get you thinking and paying attention more in scripture to lies that are told in the Bible. Not by God. God tells the whole truth, nothing but the truth, always. But the people that are in the Bible, they tend to lie. Even the best of people will lie. So we're going to look at that today. Hey, um, January has been a lot of fun. We have rooted every devotion in a 2023 uh, verse in and a way of encouraging you to keep on keeping on whatever you started, whatever you started praying for or birthing in the beginning of the new year. Um, my prayer is that you are still doing that. You are holding fast to that. And um, so these 2023 verses have been kind of a reminder. Keep going, keep going. Um, we've been giving away a Bible, a new living Bible to uh, a bunch of people in January every week. So we've given away, I think four so far. This is our fifth. And our winner today, Diane Dixon is our winner of the New Living Bible. So Diane, I will get that to you soon and I hope you enjoy it. Um, I think I may have ordered some extras, so stay tuned. We may still give away some more and we've got some awesome stuff coming up in February. You know, February is the month of love and one of my favorite Valentine candies is Conversation Hearts. So that's going to be our theme for February. Conversation Hearts, two Christians sharing their hearts. I'm going to have a guest on every week in um, February. And I've told them, you choose the topic and let's just talk about it. It's going to be informal. I think it'll be very insightful. And I've got some amazing guests coming on. So you, you want to be a part of that. Guys, as always, I'm here to pray for your needs. I'm here to um, listen to you and hear your story and give you feedback and um, just share in this walk with Christ together. So if ever you want to share some prayer concerns or you just want to share uh, what's going on with you or your testimony, feel free to do that. You can email me at spiritmom.com at gmail.com and I always look forward to hearing from you guys beyond just you know, the, um, the messages on YouTube and Facebook. I love those too. Um, but if you guys ever need to share more than that, you are welcome to, um, and I would love to hear from you. All right. So we're actually on our way out of town right after I get through filming this. So I have some people inside the house tapping their toes, but I will not be rushed. I will enjoy my time with my dirt road believers. So let's get into the truth about lying okay first of all let's start with our 2023 verse that is going to anchor us today we are in proverbs 2023 all right proverbs 2023 says differing weights are detestable to the lord and dishonest scales unfair so in other words if you are measuring people by different scales if you are in business and you are um, measuring you know quantities of things and you use scales that you have manipulated that is lying that is cheating and as we know um, the number one character of God is he is all truth so clearly he expects us to be honest to be fair and to be truthful with one another now, let's think about lying for just a little bit. Lying allows a person to establish um, perceived control over a situation by somehow manipulating it, okay? So 
when my children first started lying, you know, around age maybe three, um, you know, the, uh, first, first the parent's reaction is, oh my gosh, how could they do that? Okay, lying is actually, in a child, lying is actually showing some intelligence, okay? Because to lie, you have to be able to put some, you, you have to be able to think like another person, okay? And whatever the reason for your lying is, you know, maybe you're trying to get out of trouble, maybe you're trying to get them to believe that you did something that you didn't do, or you didn't do something that you did do. Usually that's the case. My sister tells the funniest story about um, when she taught, I think it was pre-K, they had given out cupcakes with green icing. And don't eat the cupcakes until everybody has their cupcake. Well, she's passing them out. Inevitably, she turns around and one little kid has green icing all around his mouth. Did you eat your cupcake? Nope, nope, I didn't need my cupcake. So, um, kids will lie, but it's nothing to be super alarmed about. Uh, what, what we should be concerned about is if that becomes a pattern. We all lie, and I'll add this, every lie is going to have a consequence. Every lie has a consequence. Um, lying is in, did you know it's in most of the um, Ten Commandments? So the first five commandments are about our relationship to God, about not making idols, love your God, um, you know, first and foremost, keep the Sabbath day holy. So the first five are related to our relationship to God. The last five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, are all related to how, how we relate to other people. Okay. Number six is do not murder, okay? If you're murdering someone, there's some lying going on somewhere because the murder is probably to cover up a lie. But um, there's a lot of dishonesty and um, lack of integrity if someone goes to the lengths to murder someone. Number seven, do not commit adultery. Obviously, if you're committing adultery, you're not being honest with your spouse. Um, stealing. Stealing is a form of lying. You're cheating someone out of what is rightfully theirs. Number nine, I mean directly, do not bear false witness about your neighbor. Don't lie about people. And sometimes you'll see in some translations, number nine just says, do not lie. But the original is, do not bear false witness about your neighbor. Don't lie about anybody else. And then number 10, don't covet. Okay, if you're coveting, you're lying to yourself. You're looking at what somebody else has and, and saying, I deserve that. That should be mine. There are lots of different types of lies. We can lie to other people. We can lie about other people. We can cheat other people. We can lie to ourselves and sometimes sometimes even convince ourselves that you know we're right. But we lie all the time. Now, what I want to talk about today and kind of get you to look at about differing weights being detestable to the Lord cheating others is wrong, setting up a scale that lies about its measurements, that is a sin. Dishonesty is condemned in scripture. Let's get that, let's get that um, straight up front. Um, Tina is not trying to find a loophole today, okay? <laughs> what I'm trying to show you is God is, has mitigating mercies, okay? Just like in a courtroom, if, if you go in and you have, um, you know, shot an intruder, that is going to be viewed differently than it, if you kill someone in cold blood, okay? Mitigating circum circumstances. God has mitigating mercies, and we're going to look at why some lies are looked at um, as sinful, unrighteous, and why other lies are, you know, looked at a little differently by God. We're going to see this in scripture. So again, Tina is not saying lying is good. Tina is saying we all lie for different reasons. And it would appear in scripture that I read and the way I interpret it, that God looks more at the motive and the intention behind the lie than he does the lie itself. So is every lie created equal? I think not. Let's look into scripture and see what you think. 
Um, first of all, let's go to 1 John uh, 5, starting in verse 16, and it says, If anyone sees a fellow believer committing a sin that does not lead to death, he should ask, and God will give him life, give the life to him. To those who commit sin that doesn't lead to death, there is sin that leads to death. I'm not saying he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin, and therefore, it is a, there is sin that does not lead to death. So, he's saying here, John is saying, look, there are some sins that lead to death. Others do not, but they can still be harmful to you. So, that right there, you know, you've heard, a lie is a lie, a sin is a sin. Well, that verse tells me maybe that's not exactly um, the way we need to look at it. So I want to let's talk about some lies in Scripture, okay? First of all, I'm gonna go back and say every lie has a consequence, okay? Um, what about these are all three um, liars in Genesis, okay? People you might recognize. Let's start with Joseph. Do you remember Joseph, when his brothers come, he puts um, some treasure, some gold, or something of value in their sacks, okay? Their sacks, when they leave, are heavier than when they came because he has used differing scales. Moses did this with the motive of getting them back. He knew his father's um, ways. He knew the Hebrew ways, and he knew that those items would be returned to him. That meant they were going to have to, once they found them when they got home, they were going to have to return. And so his, his plan worked. Did he lie? Did he cheat by putting those things in their bags? Yeah. Was he blessed by God and his family returned to him? To live out the rest of their days. Yes, he was. All right, let's talk about another guy you might have heard of, Abraham. Abraham, he and Sarah, before they had children, they went into these, um, you know, I guess palaces, you would say, where um, there was someone with a lot of power, and he had a very beautiful wife. Sarah was very beautiful. The scriptures tell us that, and so he would lie about Sarah being his wife as a way of protecting her. If they think you're my wife, they may kill me and take you. So he lied and said, she's not my wife, she's my sister. Was Abraham punished for this? It doesn't say so in scripture. It says that his plan worked. He, um, he was spared and his wife was spared and they were sent away. Um, even with gifts, like we want to be, you know, they feared God, even though they didn't serve God. And so Abraham and Sarah were both protected because of that lie. This is one of my favorite lies in scripture. Okay. It's hilarious and it's totally unbelievable, but it does something pretty remarkable. In Genesis, the midwives who were delivering the Hebrew babies, you know, every Pharaoh said, nope, every firstborn or every every male baby that is Hebrew must die. And he was putting it in the hands of the midwives. Well, if you know anybody that delivers babies, their job and their deepest, you know, instinct is to protect babies. So they didn't do it. And when Pharaoh called him back and was like, look, um, what's going on? I, I told you to kill these babies and you're not doing it. This is the funniest lie ever. Oh, oh Pharaoh. You don't understand. Hebrew women are different. Um, when Hebrew women have babies, they're not like the Egyptians. They have the baby so fast that we can't get there in time. <laughs> and he bought it. And it said that these, these two midwives were blessed because of it. Up until that point, their wombs had been closed. They had not even been able to have their own children. But because they were protecting all these Hebrew baby boys, God granted them their own children and they became pregnant. Okay, there's a lie, a pretty foolish, blatant lie that was blessed by God. So I'm going to ask you again, is a lie a lie? 
when I look at these examples, and there are hundreds more throughout Scripture, when I look at these lies, I see that the motive was to protect. The motive was to restore. The motive was to heal. And in these cases, God actually blessed them for lying. Now, I don't know anyone watching, certainly not me, you know, if a gunman comes to my front door and wants to know, is there anyone else in your house? Uh, no, there's not. <laughs> I don't have to think about that lie, okay? There's some lies that just, you know, I don't care what the consequence is. I'm not, um, I'm not going to not protect my family. <clears throat> I will lie first. <clears throat> and so, the scripture tells us that one day everything will be laid bare. Those lies that we have told, um, not just the lies, the motive behind the lie. Why did we do that? It's all going to be laid bare. And I do believe that sometimes you can have a righteous motive and and manipulate the truth. And we saw that with the midwives. We saw that with Joseph. We saw that with Abraham. And so mitigating mercies of God look at not just the action. What was the motive behind the action? And overall, are we truthful? I would have to say there are times that I'm like, Paul, why do I do the things I want to do? Why do I not do the things I do want to do? Sometimes I look back and I go, why did I, like there was no reason for, for lying. I should have just told the truth. And as we know, when you tell one lie, you have to tell another lie and another lie. And so someone who lies habitually, um, they, they seem to lie for just no reason at all. Um, repetitive liars, they get to the point where they don't even think they're lying. And the consequence of that is they ruin just about every relationship that they have. No one believes in. It's like the boy that cried wolf. But <clears throat> I'm addressing the average Christian here, right? <laughs> the, the average person. Um, to consider lies have a motive. And it's is the intent of the lie to deceive? Is it to, um, you know, hurt someone? Is it to cheat someone? Or is the lie to protect and spare someone's feelings? There is a difference there, I think. Now, sadly today, um, there is a need for fact checkers. You may have noticed in business and politics, there's someone who gets paid to follow up on people's um, claims, you know? Are they telling the truth? And, and I think these days we expect people to lie before we expect them to tell the truth because they're trying to get something out of us, right? Um, certainly, deceitfulness is not supposed to be a part of the Christian's day-to-day -day life. Does it happen occasionally? Yes. But um, hopefully our motives are still good and pure. And when we do lie, it is to um, to help. And you know, if I ask my husband, how does my hair look today? I don't care what he thinks. He's probably gonna say, it looks great. He could be lying, I don't know, but I appreciate that lie. Don't you ladies? All right, let's check out one more whopper of a lie before we go. We're gonna find this in 1 Samuel. David, David lied, okay? This lie, he was is in 1 Samuel, let me find it, 1 Samuel, I believe, 20, yes, and he was running from Saul, Saul was after him trying to kill him, I'm sorry, it's, um, it's 21, it's 1 Samuel 21, David went to the priest at Nob, um, Ahimelech was afraid to meet David, and so he said to him, why are you alone, why is no one with you? David answered the priest, the king gave me a mission, but he told me, don't tell anyone, um, don't let anyone know about the mission I'm sending you on or what I have ordered you to do. I have stationed my young men at a certain place. Now, what do you have on hand? And they're, they're hungry, okay? They've been running. He lies that the king had sent him on the mission. He even takes the sword that was there that he killed Goliath with 
um, and he and his men eat the bread of presence, um, which was really only for the priests. And later on, Jesus himself addresses that when the disciples were going through the wheat field and they were picking off grains of wheat to eat and somebody was like, ah, oh, that's, that's unlawful, it's on the Sabbath. And he said, uh, didn't David and his men eat the bread of presence because they were hungry? Um, okay, I'm getting sidetracked, but the big whopper of the lie was, the king sent me on a mission, but it's a secret mission. He tells this to the priest. This lie has a major consequence. Um, David lies because he's desperate. Um, he's fearful for losing his life. But what winds up happening is all Saul's men come to the town of Nob and they kill, um, I think, 80 or more priests. So it had a devastating consequence. And guys, I guess if I have a moral to my message today, it is this. We lie. Everybody we know lies, okay? But when we are dealing with people who lie to us or lie about us, um, I, I just ask us to look at the motive behind the lie. You know, if I lie, God's going to deal with me about it. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to repent and ask his forgiveness. And I feel like we have to be the same way with other people. You know, if, if I feel like someone has lied to me, lied about me, um, then it's my responsibility to go to them and have mitigating mercies and say, look, why did you do it? I know with children, I'm much more interested in why they did something than what they actually did, because that to me says more. And, um, so as we deal with other people and we look at those last, um, five commandments, you know, be honest, be truthful. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to others. Um, be a person who is consistently truthful, just like this word that we, we read. Everything in it is truthful. Now, there's some liars in it. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but let us um, be the kind of people who are like God and have mitigating mercies. And sometimes those lies that have the best of motives can actually turn into a big blessing. Guys, this has been a pretty cool topic today. I hadn't talked about lying um, on this channel yet, but um, I had a good time researching it and and just getting ready to talk to you about it. So I hope it's blessed you guys. If you want to share this, please, I encourage you to join me on Dirt Road Believer Facebook group where we get daily encouragement in the Christian faith. Join me on Instagram where you can see our family and what we're up to. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, I hope you will do that. Can't wait to see you in February for Conversation Hearts. Diane, I'll get your Bible to you soon. And uh, who knows, we may draw for some more. I've got a couple more lying around the house. All right, guys, have a great day. And until next time, slow down. Take the dirt road, believer.